On the 4th of August 2023, I set off from the Wickham Festival in Hampshire to walk more than 180 miles to Folk East in Suffolk, near Ipswich. And I did it to raise money for the charity Help Musicians, which does vital work supporting musicians when they fall on hard times, when they have mental or physical health problems, and when they are, are struggling to build careers in what is a very um, challenging and precarious industry. And along the way, I had some absolutely amazing experiences because every night an artist came to meet me in the pub and to play for me and whoever else had cared to turn up. And this podcast is telling you the story of the Big Walk 2023 from Wickham in Hampshire to Folk East in Suffolk. Please welcome to the stage, Matt Ballister. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Phil. Um, I'm not going to sing. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, I'm going to set off from Gate B at this festival, at this wonderful festival, and I'm going to walk 180 miles to reach Folk East in two weeks. Um, and I'm doing it for an amazing cause, to raise funds for a charity called Help Musicians, which supports musicians when they get into difficulties. During the pandemic, they gave emergency grants to hundreds and thousands of musicians who got into real financial difficulties. And now they're supporting those musicians as they come back out of lockdown. Some of them are facing mental health problems. Some of them have physical problems. Some of them need business advice. But this charity loves music and musicians as I love music and musicians. And so I'm going to take this supreme effort, walk 180 miles and attract sponsorship and all of it will go direct to help musicians. I'm going to go stand at the exit as you come out tonight with a bucket and I hope you'll put some cash in. And I'm going to be joined on the way by musicians every night. Steve Knightley and Johnny Kelsey are coming to the Crown Hotel in Alton on Saturday night to sing a couple of songs with me and at the end of every day there'll be a musician there uh, supporting me as I try to support them. Thank you for listening and support this great call. So without more ado, let us begin this epic Folk on Fork Big Walk 2023. Are you ready? Five, four, So I'm walking along now with my great friend and route finder general, Stephen Nevin, who has mapped out the entire route for this walk. And Stephen, can you just give us a kind of rough overview of what's in prospect, where we're going to be going? Yes, we're going at 185 miles, actually, as per my latest uh, assessment. We're not going as the crow flies to Folk East. When I looked at the but the route on the western side, it seemed to me to satisfy what I particularly like about walking in and around London is to find Rus in Urbe, to find the countryside in the city. Obviously, the first day was very easy to do because we're on the Mion. We're about to start on the Mion Trail, which runs 10 miles north to West Mion. We then go to Alton, and then to Hartley Whitney. Then we head towards Ascot. And then, of course, you enter Windsor Great Park. And I suppose we're going to go up that long walk where we, we saw that on the Queen's funeral, the late Queen's funeral. Exactly. You're with the, the cortege it, going up there exactly with the flowers. Exactly that, with, yeah. with Windsor Castle getting closer and closer. And then pause at this wonderful little hotel in Eton. And then towards Slough, towards the 
cloud-capped palaces of the town of Slough, <laughs> where we then grab the spur off the Grand Union Canal, walk along there, going east for a few miles, and then cutting north and heading into this extraordinary nature wonderland, which, of course, is the Cone Valley Trail. So going there's a lot of waterways north. there, aren't there? A lot there? of waterways there. Oh, the happy summer's welcome back once more. The brown boat steal it to the golden shore. And the cookie calling from the woods within. And my love beside me and the tide full here. And from there, we'll skirt round Rickmansworth, Watford, and then head on. Going crossing over the M25 on the northern section. Then I can hardly wait. Hardly, exactly. <laughs> we skirt south of the, the mighty Stansted Airport and then do the final nine and a half miles to end up on the south side of Glemon Park, where, of course, Folk East takes place. And no doubt there'll be rapturous crowds there waiting to, <laughs> Possibly. to receive you after or, this or epic, a, epic journey. A terrible silence. I, I'm <laughs> hoping that Boss Morris will be there, actually, the... Prog Morris side from Gloucestershire who uh, oh, featured on the Brit Awards with excellent. Wet Leg. Oh, well, wow. So I'm hoping that they will be there to dance us into the <laughs> festival side. Um, and I should say, we're just going through some rather lovely countryside here with a field with horses. Yes. A couple of horses, and we're about to cross a bridge. Uh, right, first question now is, is go down here, presumably, and then just keep going north. <laughs> Look at your map. <laughs> Look no, 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 it just, I, don't, I wasn't quite sure what, 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 how the access point was. We're now going to join the railway, the old railway line. OK. There it is down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Here we are. And uh, we're going to go up now 10 miles uh, until we get to West Mian, where there'll be a gig at 5.30. At the Thomas Lord Pub. At the Thomas Lord Pub. With don't be there Ron Piggott and Rosie Hodgson of the Wilderness Yet. Hide from your neighbours as much as you please But all that has happened to us you must tell Or else we will give you no honey to sell A maiden in her glory it's day two of the big walk and the weather's taken a turn for the worse. The rain is absolutely siling down and you might be able to hear it pouring into the drain outside the Thomas Lord pub here. So it's Saturday the 5th of August and I'm afraid this weather's set in all day. I've got a 14 mile walk to Alton to come in the rain. But I'm, I'm relying on the old cliche that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. So I've got the waterproof trousers on, I've got the waterproof jacket, I've got some dry bags with Nassani's in. Just giving you a bit more drain. So it's about five past twelve now and mercifully the rain has stopped. It's just been horizontal rain all morning and I'm pretty much soaked but the sun is trying to come through the clouds and I've just heard the whistle and the sound of a steam engine which I think might be the famous watercress line that you find at Alton in Hampshire so maybe I'm not that far away and uh, I'm going to plunge on now into St Swithin's Way we're, we're, we're just joining St Swithin's Way which we're going to take all the way to Alton, and I'm also hoping that I'll meet up with my wonderful partner, Kate Maguire, who's driving the support vehicle on this walk, and, uh, and then to head on with the walk. Well, now it's about 10 to 1 on day two, and the St. Swithin's Way is just bringing me into the back entrance of a garden centre. And what do we know about garden centres? Well, we know that wherever there's a garden centre, there must be a cafe. So this will be a great place to get a cup of tea, have lunch, and also to meet my partner, Kate. Absolutely lovely to see you. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm, uh, well, I'm a bit wet. <laughs> it's been a, been a quite a tough morning. Um, so there was two hours of absolutely horizontal rain um, you know, coming in from the side, and I had this big pull up Fillmore Hill, 
and I had to take my specs off because they steamed up and they got covered in water and I couldn't see anything, which obviously made life difficult when it came to reading the map. But uh, uh, there was a great moment when I just came through a wood, dark wood, and came out into this field. And all of a sudden, there were swifts dive-bombing the surface mm. of the field, and the rain stopped. And it was just like an uplifting moment after all that head down, plow on, keep splashing through the mud. Got mud splashed all the way up my waterproof trousers. Mm. Uh, and uh, it's, it's not dry inside this waterproof Ooh, <laughs> jacket, I want to tell you. Too much information. <laughs> anyway, should we go and get a cup of tea? Yeah, let's. Shelter and shade was the oak tree grow. Church and cradle, hearth and home. Arms so strong, they hold the sky. Break the branch. That cup of tea and delicious millionaire's shortbread gave me a false sense of security but just after I left the garden centre the rain came back even worse than it was this morning and thunder huge peals of thunder and a torrential downpour but an amazing moment, another amazing moment when I was just coming out into into the middle of two fields a pair of hares suddenly started up from the path and one went to the right and one went to the left. Huge rear feet and enormous ears. All you could see then was their ears bobbing through the stubble. But we're heading now for Chawton, a beautiful village where Jane Austen lived and wrote some of her most famous books. And I think one way to uh, deal with things is to get in out of the rain and go and to visit Jane Austen's house. Although I've got this picture in my mind of her and her lady friend sitting round the fire, perhaps with a little embroidery, perhaps with uh, some cups of tea in bone china and a little fire burning in the grate, maybe one of them playing the spinet. And through the door comes this man in an orange waterproof and waterproof trousers and massive muddy boots and water steaming and streaming off him. And that's the scene that we might create when we get to Jane Austen's house. I don't know if they'll even let me in. could it? I pictured the scene and then the scene happened. Two ladies playing a duet at Jane Austen's old piano here in her drawing room and uh, they very kindly allowed me to listen to their rehearsal for a concert that's going to take place tonight. And now I'm in Jane Austen's dining room and uh, it's, it is really rather moving to be in the house where she gave the first reading of Pride and Prejudice in the room where those ladies were playing. So it's a great interlude and st stop me worrying about being wet. I'm now just coming into Alton High Street and we're walking down towards the Swan Hotel, which is where we're going to spend the night and also where we're going to meet up with Steve Knightley, Johnny Kelsey and Eliza Marshall for some music. And today I've done 14 miles and I have to say my legs are definitely feeling it. And I'm absolutely drenched. So I'm looking forward to uh, maybe a shower, um, some dry clothes on and then going to hear some music. But it's been a, it's been a thoroughly, <laughs> thoroughly enjoyable day. And let's go inside inside now. So here we are with 
Eliza Marshall, Steve Knightley, Johnny Kelsey in the Swan Hotel in Alton. And I know you all very well because I've done episodes of Folk on Foot with you, so I thought I might start by doing your walking styles. Steve Knightley recorded the first episode of Folk on Foot with me, and he's a man who likes to put on a pair of slip-on loafers and then go for a walk with his dog up the well-paved X Trail. Yes. Is that fair? I, I wander up the X. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Johnny on, Kelsey is a man of style. Yeah. He's sharp-dressed. He's wearing lime green Wellingtons, let me tell you, and they're designer Wellingtons. And he likes to take you around the city. He takes you to Southall for a great feast. That's right, isn't it, Johnny? Yep, and a ruby. Yeah, a ruby, Murray. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Eliza took me on a 10-mile hike to the top of the Malvern Hills. That's true, isn't it? That is very true, with a concert harp as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and who is going to come walking with me tomorrow of those three people? Not me. Well, I am. Having yeah. uh, seen the rain today, I thought, why not? OK. Well, look, it's fantastic to have you all here. There's a nice audience gathered, uh, and I, I'd love to hear you play some music. So, uh, over to you. So it's day three and we're in the busy Alton High Street outside the Swan Hotel. There is blue sky and sunshine and also there is Eliza Marshall. Fantastic to see you. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And it's great that you're going to walk with me 14 miles to is the Winchfield Inn. It's about that, oh, yeah. Did bye nobody bye. tell you that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fantastic. And you're going to play for us at the Winchfield Inn. And, and I noticed you packing a load of stuff into the car. Um, how many flutes have you brought with you? Probably just over 10 flutes. 10 flutes. So you're yeah. going to play them all simultaneously or one after the other tonight? Well, let's see. Let's see how we feel after 14 miles. <laughs> So I'm, I'm really pleased that Mary's joined us now, Mary Herbert. That's right, and, yes. And you live here, do you, Mary? I live in one of the villages in Alton, yes. You came to the pub last night, I think, to see Steve and uh, Eliza and Johnny. Yes, indeed, that was fantastic. That was really nice to see professional musicians on our doorstep. Uh, enjoying making music with the locals. It's been very handy having you to guide our steps out of the town. Um, I think we're going to go straight across here, but who knows? Um, let's have a quick look at my instructions. Dun, 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 straight ahead. Crossroad, a T-junction in path, turn left. Well, there hasn't been a T-junction in the path, has there? No. Can we see one ahead of us? Yeah, there's still room to go down there. I'm losing track of time and what day it is. I feel unconnected to the real world. Even though we're posting things on social media and we've arrived now in a small town, I feel like I'm operating on a different time zone than everybody else. Well, Did you feel that? Ma this Matthew Bannister, now you're coming into a musician's life <laughs> where <laughs> everything is so erratic that you forget what day it is quite often, I think. <laughs> But if this is Sunday, it must be time for Sunday lunch now, must not it? Well, there's a good idea. I've got the cheese and pickle sandwiches in my bag. And maybe a cake? If we can find a cake, you can have one. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome to the stage Mr John Wilkes. 
Have you come far, John? Uh, probably about half an hour, but it, by car, not on foot. So why did you decide to come along tonight? Why did you want to support the walk? Because I think you do a lot for other people, Matthew, and I think it's lovely what you do, whether it's folk or on foot or whether it's raising money, which I know you've done a few times, and somebody ought to do something nice for you, so I thought I'd come down here and play a few songs. I'm really touched by that, John. Thank mm. you very much indeed. Well, listen, I'm <laughs> going to leave you to it, so uh, okay. off you go. OK. So I, um, I had a think about the songs that... I knew that involved walking, and I don't know any, so I just thought, actually, I'll start off with something just to wake you up. So, This is a song called You Can Shake It, You Can Break It, But Don't Let It Fall, Mama. <laughs> Break it, you can hang it on the wall out the window, right before it falls. You can shake it, you can break it, you can hang it on the wall out the window, just before it falls. My jelly, my roll, sweet mama, don't you let it fall. Everyone got a jelly roll like mine. I'm been in town and I'm blue all the time and I'm oh, when the sun goes down, my jelly, my roll, sweet mama, don't you let it fall. You can twist it, you can shake it, you can have it, you can break it anyway. A lot of love to get it, and I'm out of my right mind, and I'm gonna blow this down my jetty. Good morning. It's day four, and I've got companions today, which is wonderful. On my left, I have Keith from Swansea, a Folk on Foot listener who's come all the way from Wales to walk with us. I've got my brother, Dan, who's come all the way from Camberley, about ten minutes away on the train, to walk with us. And we're all on our best behaviour because on my right, I have Sarah Woods, who is Chief Executive of the Help Musicians Charity, the charity that we're doing all this for. So we're about to set off, and we're aiming for Ascot, about 14 miles away, where we going to meet up with Martin Simpson and that'll be fabulous. It's absolutely gorgeous isn't, isn't it? it? I mean, we're, we're just in the middle of a field and there's a hill just rising up with uh, yellow flowers, wildflowers in amongst the grass and the sun shining. We've got it's our sunglasses nice. on. You've got your Panama hat. <laughs> what a better day. You've chosen a great day to come. I have, I have. Thanks for having me here. No, it's great to have you. And I wanted to learn a little bit more about the charity that we're doing this for because it's, it's quite an old foundation, isn't it? I think it's 100 years old. That's correct. So we were founded in 1921 by um, Edward Elgar, supporting musicians in times of crisis and over the last hundred years we've developed our range of support both in terms of crisis and also in times of opportunity so today we offer a wide range of support for musicians right across the UK musicians of all genres helping them in difficult times whether that's health whether that's finances whether that's mental health but also in terms of career development so if you're a musician today please do go look at help musicians website and see whether there's something that we can support you with in terms of your career and um, one of the things that people who listen to Folk on Foot will know about is the emergency support that you did during the pandemic that our listeners raised uh, £327,000 to support musicians and half of that went to you. What happened to that and, and how did you react when the pandemic broke out? So when the pandemic hit, obviously musicians' income went overnight and our health and welfare team received thousands of calls for support from musicians needing help with their finances. So we readied quite a substantial fund, providing musicians in the early stages with a £500 grant just to get them over that initial hurdle. And as the pandemic progressed, some musicians went back to being able to earn, others still struggled, so we had a number of phases of hardship. So in terms of the folk and foot support that we received, and thank you to everyone that donated it really did make a difference a lot of that went to that hardship support but also to help musicians with other forms of support during that time uh, but it really did make a difference during that time so thank you i suppose some people are listening to this might be thinking well you know we're in a cost of living crisis it's tough for everybody and there are all sorts of demands on our charitable giving why should we think about musicians in particular what particular issues do they face and and why are they deserving 
Matthew, I think that's a really fair question. You know, musicians bring so much to many of us. They bring us so much joy. And over the last couple of years, I think, you know, the pandemic has hit them hard. Some of them are now trying to get their careers back on track and there can, might, might be some obstacles to that. And therefore, particularly from a mental health point of view, you know, they can find that difficult. I think musicians need our support right now. I think they will continue to need our support over the next couple of years. It could be Um, a very fragile existence, can't it? Because although you hear a lot about the multimillionaire pop stars who themselves sometimes have admitted to mental health problems or talked about that publicly... Really, a lot of the musicians are working on a kind of hand-to-mouth freelance basis, aren't they? They are. 70% of the musicians' population are freelancers. Uh, and therefore, they've got to do so much. They've got to, ma- they've got to manage their creativity. They've got to manage their businesses. It is a kind of, you know, hard margin life. And then, it, you know, there's touring. There's a number of things that take you away from your home in terms of looking after your health. So it's a multitude of those different unique challenges that I think make a life in music, you know, a difficult profession. And that's why a charity like Help Musicians needs to be here with resources to be able to pick them up when they need it. And I think what strikes a chord with me, and I don't know if you'll excuse that expression, but powerfully what you say about the joy that musicians bring into our lives. And for me, I've said this a lot, the... The music is like food or water or air in my life. I think it's an essential, not a nice to have. And it's the first thing I always do when I move to a new place is to set up the music so that that can be the accompaniment to everything else that I do. And it lifts you up and it takes you out of your depression and it helps you to dance and it can mark important moments. And that, for me, is the motivation for doing these things that, that I'm doing to try to raise some money. Absolutely. Please make a donation at foconfoot.com slash big walk. We are gathered here together in the Royal Foresters in Ascot. <laughs> and I'm, I'm really pleased to say that Martin Simpson's here, which is always a joy. Martin, thanks so much for coming. It's a total pleasure. I'm so pleased to be here. Congratulations. On uh, the, well, on the feet. On the feet. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie Norris from Ballet Focus here is a special guest appearance that, that you brought a dancer uh, to join us. Who, who is the dancer? Yeah, so we've brought Anna Smith, who has been dancing with us recently in various festivals and our performances, and we're really delighted to be able to share a little pop-up improvisation this evening with one of Martin's tracks. It's really great to be here. Martin, can I just ask why you wanted to come to support me in, in this walk? It's just fantastic well, to have because you. because you supported us so beautifully, you know, during lockdown. A lot of people... A lot of people would like to express their appreciation for what you do. And so, you know, I got in the car and drove down from Sheffield listened to a load of mixes, and I felt like I was working on the way down here, and now I don't feel like I'm working. I feel like I'm doing something right. Oh, Martin, that's fantastic. Well, I'm going to let you get on with it. This song I was asked to write, I was asked to write it by Chris Packham. And when Chris Packham (laughs) asked you to write a song... You know, you might think about it for 0.2 of a second or something like that. So this is a song about um, about hen harriers. And hen harriers live on the moors up near me, but they don't live in as many numbers as they should on the moors near me, or indeed anywhere where there are grouse moors, because despite the fact that they're a red-listed endangered species... The people who own grouse moors uh, employ gamekeepers to shoot them and poison them and trap them, and it's, uh, it's an obscenity, really. And I'm really delighted to say that I have somebody to dance while I play this song. Um, so I am immensely delighted to be playing this song and have, and have you dancing. Thank you so much. So this is Sky Dancers. Constellations shine among the blooming heather and ling and the jade green berry bushes. The oak eggers are on the wing. The stone chats and the 
pipits fly, and spring lap wings and curlews cry, but there is something missing, there are no dancers in the sky. And the bird completes the skyline, that is clear to see, an empty sky is a heart break, so what is it to be? The pale ash grey sky dancer, or this cruel tyranny? Well, it's day five, and today started with a fine but penetrating drizzle falling. So the waterproofs are back on, the dry bags are back out. And today's walk is sort of by royal appointment, because we're going from the Royal Foresters Hotel in Ascot, it's all getting very posh, to the Crown and Cushion pub in Eton High Street, via the Long Walk, Windsor Castle, Windsor Great Park, and some magnificent uh, surroundings. And perhaps because of the weather, I don't know, I'm walking on my own today, and I thought this might be a good time to take stock of where we've got to on day five. We've done more than 50 miles. Well, I've done more than 50 miles. Um, and how am I feeling? My calves are a bit tight. I've got an insect bite on my right elbow, which has sort of swollen up a bit, and a bit of an ache in my left shoulder where my bag's been rubbing my rucksack um, but I have to say that I feel a bit of a sense of relief to be walking on my own and I'm, I was feeling quite tired last night I stayed up quite late chatting with Martin Simpson which was absolutely wonderful uh, but probably I should have gone to bed a bit earlier um, and I was trying to work out why I'm feeling physically tired, not just in... There are no aches and pains, really, but the physically tired. And I think there are two things. One is the pressure of people, and the other is the pressure of the process. And uh, it's been amazing to have some companions with me on the walk so far. Um, and we've had great conversations, and we've shared our life stories together and so on, and that's been really wonderful. But I've started to feel a bit like a host at a non-stop party. You know how when you're at a party you sort of try to take care of your guests to make sure they're happy, you try to introduce them to one another and make connections um, and then you know we come to meet the artists in the evening and I really want to make sure the artists are okay and that the recording sessions are fine and that they meet the people who've been walking with me and so on and so I'm feeling a bit of a pressure on that and also a pressure when I'm walking, um, to make sure that I don't go wrong with the navigation. Because when I'm on my own, it doesn't really matter if I take a big detour and go the wrong way or have to come back and retrace my steps. But I feel a bit embarrassed if I'm with other people who are relying on me. So I definitely was feeling a pressure of people, and I feel lighter walking on my own today, which is, which is interesting. And I don't want to be churlish about this because there are more people coming to walk with me in future days and I really welcome them. I really want to see them. Um, and it's, it, it is enlivening to have that company, but it's nice to have the contrast of solitude. It's not the walking that is stressful, actually. The walking, in a way, is, is pleasurable and therapeutic. It's the process of constantly thinking about recording for the podcast, thinking about social media and Kate... My partner is taking a huge amount of this burden from me, but I'm still having that on my mind, thinking about the fundraising. You know, are we doing enough to promote the fundraising and to get the target hit? Um, and then, you know, will the pub be all right when we arrive? Will there be room for the musicians? Will we be able to record them properly? Will there be background noise? So I realised that I'm, I'm sort of carrying a lot of extra stress along with my backpack. And so today, what I'm, I'm planning to do is not record very much and just walk and be in the moment and relate to the landscape and the wonderful views and see uh, if that refreshes me in a totally different way. Now, there's a gentleman walking towards me who I think might be somebody who emailed me to get in touch with me and said he would join me 
on this stretch of the walk. I think it's Mike Pringle. Are you Mike? I, I am. Oh, well, well <laughs> met in Ascot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, very nice to meet you, Matthew. Yeah. So, why did you get in touch with me? What, what are you doing in the way of walking? Well, I come from the Richard Jefferies Museum in Swindon. Uh, Richard Jefferies, a Victorian nature writer, it's his 175th anniversary this year. So we've mapped out a 175-mile route that takes in all the places he lived and where he died down in Brighton. And t- tell so, me about Richard Jefferies, more about sure, him and why sure. you're so interested in him. Well, he was a nature writer and he was a huge name in his day, but his day came and went. I stumbled across the museum many years ago and it was in a state of disrepair. Was this his house? This was where he was born and bred. Right. Yeah, so... um, uh, And it was one of those things where, you know, there were no resources to look after it, etc., etc. And I just somehow I got wrapped up in it and thought, this is such a wonderful thing. And bit by bit got to know this man who lived there and wrote the most incredible stuff about nature. And the brilliant thing about Jeffries is that he's... I, he's, he's his own man. He was living half the time in rural Wiltshire, half the time in, in sort of South London, which was, I suppose was the edge of the city then, in, in Victorian times. And he was just observing nature in a way that it feels everybody is doing now. So we're seeing his, this huge resurgence in, in sort of popularity of this man. So he's a kind of Victorian Robert McFarlane, is he? he exactly right, yes. In fact, Robert McFarlane knows uh, Jeffreys well. You know, you're, so that's a very good analogy, yeah. Mm. He has been called the sort of David Attenborough of his day, but I think Robert McFarlane is probably more accurate, actually. Well, it's wonderful to see you. Shall we, shall we walk on? <laughs> shall let's, we? Let's just do a, a couple of miles together, shall we? Thank you. Here we are in the Crown and Cushion pub in Eton High Street, which I think is a little bit like Hogwarts, don't you? It's Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with Janice Burns and John Dorrit. Day six has been a day of water, and you can still hear it actually here because we are by the River Colne, and the water is coming through the lock gates. And we walked up part of the Grand Union Canal, including the Slough Arm, and we've seen lots of bird life: coots, moorhens, uh, oh hello, uh, children, obviously. Um, we've seen uh, heron. Natalie, our producer, saw a kingfisher, and it's been absolutely idyllic and the, of course by water this waterway system that comes up the west of london it means that the walking has all been on the flat so it, it's not been physically that challenging but it's been a, a beautiful experience and i've been accompanied by my son joe and his friend joe um so you you don't have to be called joe on this walk but obviously today you do it helps. <laughs> yeah uh how's it been for you joe uh, sorry that's my son joe <laughs> Yes, lovely, lovely weather, lovely countryside, lovely company. It's a pretty good way to spend a, a Wednesday, I'd yeah. say. What about Joe number two? I, I think weaving through the sort of outskirts of London and then occasionally having moments of wilderness and then a pie for lunch. It's been pretty good altogether. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's been absolutely beautiful. So we're going to round off today with the voice of Kirsty Merrin, a rising star of the folk world, a young singer and songwriter who's coming to join us at the Koi Carp pub which is right by the water There were three men come from the west, their fortunes for to try, and these three men made a solemn vow, John Barleycorn must die They ploughed this old, they arrowed him and threw clods upon his head Then these three men made a solemn vow, John Barleycorn they let him lie for a 
very long time till the rain from heaven did fall. Then we said John raised up his head and he amazed them more. They let him lie till the midsummer till he looked pale and wan. Then we said John grew a big long beard and he became a man. In the audience here, we have the first Folk on Foot Big Walk T-shirt that go. I've seen <laughs> so far on the walk, and it's been worn, modelled for us by Jim. It looks great on him, doesn't it? It does. Good work, Jim. <laughs> yeah, nice. Rocking the merch. <laughs> Round of applause for Jim. <laughs> Here's a letter to John in the nut brown bowl and brandy in a glass. And we said, John, in the nut brown bowl, prove the stronger man at last. For the hunter, he can't hunt the fox, nor loudly blow his horn. And the cook can't mend his kettle or pots without John Barnum. Good morning. Good morning. So day seven has dawned bright and fair and the sun is out again and we're back by the Grand Union Canal walking off from the Koi Carp pub where we had such a lovely time with Kirsty Merrin yesterday uh, and the sun is glinting on the water, the ducks are out. I've just seen a little family of coots and the narrow boats are moored along the side of the canal. I hope we're not waking people as we go past. And today's objective is Brickett Wood, um, in the lee of the M25. We're heading... Oh, there's a cat on this narrow boat. Hello. But it's another day of canals and the hidden green spaces as we are circumnavigating Watford. Well, this is a scene. It's the morning, and I'm in the beef eater, Brickett Wood, and <laughs> I'm with uh, Honey and the Bear and Toby, and they're uh, here in front of the most amazing mill wheel, vast piece of equipment. You might hear the water running through it. It's wonderful, isn't it? It is, and the huge wheels and the belts that would have powered the mill are all still in place. Um, the big wooden beams that are supporting the whole building, it's all seeing here behind us, isn't it? It's just yeah. absolutely fantastic. Great setting for my after-breakfast music. It's lunchtime on day eight, and I've been walking on my own this morning, which has been fine, but the great thing is that every day I meet up with Kate for lunch, and today I've treated her to a recreation ground just outside Wellham Green. What do you think, Kate? It's lovely. Yes. Lovely. <laughs> We're having our cheese and pickle sandwiches together. Which I made. Which she made. <laughs> and I thought you might be interested to know what's going on behind the scenes on this walk, because it's not all about me. And Kate is doing an amazing job. So, Kate, would you just describe a typical day when I'm walking 13.5 miles in the rain? What are you doing? <laughs> we start with either a photo or a film of you setting off um, and then my first job is to upload all of that to social media so that means Facebook, Instagram Twitter and TikTok Voyage of Discovery We're huge on TikTok, I we can't are. tell you uh, and then somewhere along the way I usually have to check out or leave the hotel or the pub or wherever we've been staying and move on to somewhere else where I can work which is vaguely on the route so that I can meet you. Uh, sometimes there's been a bit of ferrying of people backwards and forwards from stations or other locations, people who've joined you. And then we meet at lunchtime and there's usually more social media to be done after lunch. 
Um, and then we meet up at the venue where we're doing the songs with the musicians in the evening. Uh, more social media posting. and then Filming. Filming the songs. And then there's a lot of uploading that then has to go on for the films and the audio file, getting it all uploaded to Dropbox so that Owen can make the films and Natalie can make the podcast. And then, if we're lucky, we get something to eat. And then we go to bed. Collapse. <laughs> Collapse. Oh. But it's quite uh, relentless, isn't it, every certainly day? certainly is. certainly is. Social media is a hungry, hungry monster. And that's how the fundraising is happening, and it's happening amazingly well, thanks to the generosity of everybody who's been reposting our stuff and liking it and, of course, making donations. Yeah, which is, so That's what keeps morale up, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, certainly does. So, i better set off again, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. You'd better get no posting. No time to waste. I've got to get posting. <laughs> OK. <laughs> See you later. OK, bye. Well, it's bright sunshine, but I'm a bit downhearted because I have a bone to pick with the Root Finder General. There was an ominous sign at the beginning of the lane that said, Danger of Death, which made me feel a bit nervous as I headed up there into the woods. And on the right, at the end of it, there was some kind of power station, again with that ominous sign on it, and ahead of me, the impenetrable barrier of the A1M, no way across at all. So I've had to take a really long detour on some lanes and across some wheat fields and then over a, a padlocked gate with barbed wire on the top of it to get here on the other side of the A1M. But I made it. I thought you might like to hear me walking through a freshly mown field at the end of day eight after 13.7 miles, 29,000 steps, just arriving at the village of Bayford. Uh, it's been a really hot day today and I've had to drink a lot of water to keep going, really warm. Um, and we were due to have some music uh, tonight from Megson at the Baker's Arms in Bayford, but sadly a couple of weeks ago they rang to say they were closing down as so many village pubs have so we've had to relocate to the practitioner arms in Hartford and that's where we're going to meet Megson and, and no doubt they will set the place alight the scene is the practitioner bar in 4th Street Hartford a small and select but beautiful audience has gathered if are you so here? So make yourself proud yeah. Yeah. If, if, if a bit sweaty. Yeah, if a bit sweaty. <laughs> to listen to Megson. And it's wonderful to have Stu and Debs here. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Are you, are, are you, I'm asking everybody, are you local? Are you nearby? We're about 30 minutes up the road, so we're in... The, we're in South Cambridgeshire, so... Yeah, the, the very first village in South Cam's kind of heart's border, so, yes. What are we trying to say? What are we trying to say? Got to find a good story. So that's not a natural Hertfordshire accent that I, I hear there, is it? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not. We're, uh, we're both from Teesside in, in the northeast of England, and uh, yeah, we left there many years ago, moved to London for a bit, and um, now we're in South Cambridgeshire. It's the start of day nine and I've been doing some sums and they're amazing actually. I've done over 101 miles so far and that is 244,616 steps. I'm going to call that a quarter of a million steps for cash. And uh, I'm feeling in good spirits. Uh, just setting off from Bayford, 
and making the trek today to Green Tie, where we're going to meet up with Sid Goldsmith and Danny Pedler of Taron. So that's something to look forward to. Never want to miss a cultural opportunity. I remember that this time last week, I was arriving sopping wet at Jane Austen's house, and I noticed that just down the road from Green Tie is the house of Henry Moore, the sculptor. So we've popped in here to look at some bulbous, sinewy shapes in the garden and have some coffee and walnut cake. So it's the end of the walk on day 10, another 13.8 miles. We've come from the village of Green Tye in Hertfordshire and crossed the boundary and we're now at the village of Great Eastern in Essex and we're going to meet Bird in the Belly at the Swan Pub here, which I'm really looking forward to. But I have to say it's been quite a struggle today because I'm somehow uh, we've done quite a lot of walking on tarmac. My foot has swollen up a bit. Uh, a bit of pain in my calf um, and in my left shoulder. So uh, I'm going to have to get out the ibuprofen again. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely feeling um, a bit more tired than I have been so far. A um, bit of a struggle today, but buoyed up by the thought of that brilliant music. Here we are in the Swan in Great Eastern with an amazing group of people gathered together. Let's hear you. And we've got Bird in the Belly with us. It's a wireless story I'll tell about lasses of pleasure that nearby do dwell. To tell our abode we are not ashamed. You'll find us in Yarmouth right down to the lake. We'll follow the game Although we are told it will bring us to shame It's hard to accept we'll survive on our own Why shouldn't the lasses make cash of their own? It's the end of day 11 and we've done 14 and a half miles to arrive at the Green Man pub in Toppersfield where we're going to meet up with Katie Spencer which will be a real treat and I've had the delight today all day of the company of Sheila uh, how are you feeling, Sheila? I'm tired, but happy. <laughs> uh, has it given you a little insight in, into what I'm going through every day? Absolutely, yes, and I'm you know, admiring you all the more for Ooh. starting out each day, the next day each time. So would you yeah. like to do it for 14 days on the trot? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> because I think you're training to do the Camino, aren't you? I'm hoping to you? do the Camino at some point, but I think I'm going to have to train quite hard. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and also this afternoon we were joined by Rachel, um, who's on her way to Folk East. Why did you want to come and join us? Um, I've been so impressed, Matthew, seeing you starting out every day, keeping walking and then getting to somewhere at the end and listening to really beautiful music. And I thought I could come and add some of my steps and cheer you on. Yeah, you did. That was fantastic. And you met us sort of halfway across a field, which was really wonderful, and then walked back to the pub with us. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me. And uh, are you looking forward to Katie Spencer tonight? Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. I thought I would... Uh, well, as I was driving down, in fact, I uh, found myself feeling quite... Uh, peaceful because I was surrounded by these amazing big skies again so I, I grew up on the east coast um, Matthew and I went for a walk just um, near where I used to live and where I grew up spent about 20 years of my life living just by the coast near Hull and uh, the water on the coastline there really kind of sh shapes the landscape but it also really shapes the people who live there as well and um, I really miss it so it's a kind of celebration of that place really
the edge of the land. So it's the morning of day 12 and it's an absolutely glorious morning. The sun is shining. You might be able to hear some wood pigeons in the background. And we're about to set off on the day's walk. But I thought I might just share a few thoughts about how I'm doing. You might want to know how I'm doing at the moment. Um, And I think the answer is that I'm very, very tired. Um, There's no dramatic injury or blister. My legs ache when I finish the walk at night, but they seem to recover enough to get me going the next day. Uh, But the tiredness is just beginning to catch up on me. But the good news is that there's less than 50 miles to go now, and we're starting to get bigger and bigger crowds at the pubs every evening, which really does lift you up. And we're starting to get people who are heading for Folk East themselves. So um, we're kind of joining a caravanserai of of people who are heading for the festival and who keep telling me how wonderful it's going to be when I get there. And that is making me feel much, much better. Um, The other thing I've noticed is that I feel quite cut off from the rest of the world. I'm normally somebody who likes to keep up to date with the news, bit of a news junkie, I suppose. Um, But I really am not interested at all in that. And I think that's very good for my mental health, just to get up every morning and know that the one task you have ahead of you is to cover those 14 miles to the next stopping point through countryside, seeing wildlife. I mean, the things we've seen on this walk have just been amazing. Hares deer, red kites, buzzards, cormorants diving for fish, heron sitting on the top of a narrow boat, Um, you know, just a little family of coots with new fledglings, just so beautiful. And a lot of fruit in the hedgerow, sloes, wild apples, and there's going to be a good crop of blackberries, I think, this year. I passed a lady picking some for her blackberry and apple pie the other day so um it's a it's a lovely thing to be separated from the world in this way and i don't see very many people i've had a couple of companions over the last couple of days which has been delightful but we don't meet other people walking on the way um and so it's as if we own the countryside itself it's it's lovely so tired but happy is the verdict at the beginning of day 12 We've got a a perfectly formed audience here in the garden and I'm delighted to say we're joined by Peter Knight and John Spires. What a joy to see you in front of this bush, Peter. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Are you on your way to Folk East? We are. Right. I just wanted to ask you why you decided to come along and support the walk. What was it about the walk that touched your imagination? Because we love you. (laughs) (laughs) Peter, thank you. No, uh, we've decided to say that. 
It's OK, you have all, you've had a word. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you're doing, Matthew, is absolutely incredible. And uh, it's generosity on a huge scale. And I think everyone thanks you for that. Oh. And, of course, it has to be, it's something that has to be supported. So it's not out of our way or an inconvenience. It's an absolute pleasure. It's day 13 and the weather could not be better. It's absolutely gorgeous. Sunshine, blue sky, if anything, just a little bit too warm. And it's uh, half past nine in the morning and I'm at the tiny hamlet of Washmere Green, which is where we stopped walking last night and we're about to start walking again today. And uh, last night was a sort of night of two halves because we had this magnificent set from Knight and Spires, Peter Knight and John Spires, in the garden of the Crown Hotel in Long Melford, which was just so inspiring. The, the musicianship was beautiful and the sympathy between the two performers was inspiring to watch. And then a great, generous bunch of donations from the crowd, which took us well past £13,000, which is amazing. But then I went to bed and uh, had a terrible night. Um, woke up in the middle of the night with my legs giving me a great deal of pain and uh, took some ibuprofen, but uh, yeah, lost about two or three hours sleep. Um, so I'm feeling quite tired this morning. But it is day 13 and we have got Bella Hardy to look forward to tonight in Claydon. And the end is in sight. Only day 14 and day 15, half of day 15 to go before we reach Folk East. So I'm determined not to be downhearted and uh, to just power on through and overcome the tiredness. So off we go. day 14 of the big walk and I never thought I'd be able to say that when I set off from Wickham Festival on the 4th of August all those days and all those miles ago and I thought tomorrow was going to be quite hectic when I arrive at Folk East Festival so I thought I might share some lessons from the walk with you today and the first thing is that all the way through the walk I've been debating this question when you walk a long way is it that Every day as you do more and more miles, your legs get stronger and therefore you feel fitter? Or is it that every day as you do more and more miles, your legs get more and more tired? And I have to tell you, it's the latter. Your legs get tired, uh, especially, I think, uh, if you're doing it day after day after day without recovery time, as I'm doing. But I am in love with my boots. Uh, they're by a company called Hanweg or Hanweg. I think it's a German company from Bavaria and I haven't had a single blister and on the days of torrential rain 
my feet have been the only dry things about me. So I'd love to do a commercial for the boots if they want one, uh, because they've been my constant companion uh, throughout all the miles, and I love them. Um, Second people I love are the Folk on Foot listeners who've walked with me, and there's evidence from them that uh, no matter where they came from or what sort of walk of life they were from or what age they were, they all had fascinating stories to tell me about their own lives and about insights into the human condition. So if you're prepared to ask questions and to listen, um, then human contact like that is, is tremendous. And I've been really touched by the way my family have rallied round to support the big walk. I've had both my brothers and my sisters-in-law walking with me and my son, and then via WhatsApp messages from France, where she's on holiday, my daughter too. Um, And it's been an absolute joy uh, to feel the warmth of their support on the walk. And and I should also notice just the, the diversity of countryside that I've been through since I was in Hampshire and now I'm in Suffolk. I've been through Berkshire um, and Hertfordshire and Essex. And I'm in the middle of a field of, of golden stubble now because the harvest is in here in Suffolk. But I've been along canal towpaths and rivers and I've seen all sorts of wildlife. And my route finder general, Stephen Navin, has done a, an amazing job of taking me off the roads and into the countryside, and we should revel in the beauty of the English countryside, particularly at this time of year. It is absolutely glorious. And I want to say thank you to the artists, because folk musicians just are the kindest, most collaborative people that I know, and a lot of them have gone the extra mile, or indeed the extra hundred miles, to support this big walk and to come along and play in the pubs, and to hear music in that intimate setting, with just a handful of people sitting around listening to some of the finest performers in the world, has been what has really kept my spirits going throughout the walk, and I thank those artists from the bottom of my heart. And finally, I should say that if you're ever undertaking a big challenge, then what you need is a loving, supportive, caring partner who's prepared to go through a lot of stress and a lot of hard work to help you realise your dreams. And I'm so fortunate to have had that in Kate, who has backed me every step of the way. And I thank you, Kate, for that. Thank you so much. And I love you. It's day... 14 of the big walk. Hundred and seventy seven miles since August the fourth, and fourteen of them today, and here we are in the duck in Campsey Ash with a select bunch of people crammed in (laughs) sitting room only. For the young uns who are here, which is absolutely fantastic, Sean and Michael and David. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for being here. Oh, it's our, our pleasure, Matthew. No, we're really, uh, you know, uh, in awe of what you've been doing, so it's been great to join you. My dad's boots are old and worn. My dad's face is tired and drawn. Oh, my dad's feet will meet the dawn. My dad's walking on. My dad's cheeks are red and raw. My dad's legs are bruised and sore, but my dad's feet can take some more. My dad's walking on. From Lickland Hill to Eastern Fen, 300 miles and back again, we will walk and talk like men. Three dads walking on. So it's got a bit noisy now because we've arrived outside Wickham Market Station. Ironically, I've walked from Wickham to Wickham, about 170-something miles, and we're opposite the dark public house where the young'uns sang last night, and we've already walked quite a distance. My route finder, General Stephen, is with us. How far have we done this morning, Stephen? Four and a half, sir. Four and a half, OK, and about another four to go. Uh, his partner, Julia, is here. Darren, who is a folk-on-foot hero mm-hmm. and lives Woo-hoo. locally, is here. Welcome, yeah. Darren. John, who's woozy with cider on his T-shirt. <laughs> Hello, John. Thank you very much for joining us. And John's son, Cole, is also with us. Cole, lovely to see you. How old are you? Nine years old. Nine years old. And I think you're doing a particular walking challenge. Can you tell me about that? 
It's a one hundred. I mean, one million step challenge for my brother, sister, and me. And right now, I'm on t- over two hundred fifty thousand steps. Two hundred fifty thousand. And are you doing that during the school holidays? Yes. Right. Six and, uh, weeks. Six weeks, and you're doing a million steps. And I've been doing this walk for two weeks, and I haven't done a million steps yet. And are you doing it for a charity? Yes. The homeless. The homeless, that's a fantastic cause. How are your legs? Fine. They're strong? <laughs> yeah. And how did you enjoy this morning's walk? Because you've been with us for four miles. Um, amazing. Amazing, Ooh. you liked it. Well, that's great. We'd like to make a little donation to your charity. I've given it to your dad here. Thank you very much. Uh, and really congratulate you and support you in your walk. And thank you very much for supporting the Folk on Foot Big well done, Walk. Cole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Round of applause for Cole. I just want to describe the scene here as we're waiting for Radio Suffolk to get ready for their outside broadcast because the wonderful dancers of Boss Morris have arrived in their pink costumes and ribbons and musicians have arrived. We have violinists and we have a town crier and his assistant here ready to speak. We have John Wilkes in the audience. We have Peter Knight in the audience. I can see him over there. We have all sorts of lovely people who've come down from the festival waiting to greet us um, and we're just waiting... We've got half a track to go. We've got Ed Sheeran on Radio Suffolk. We're waiting for Ed Sheeran. (laughs) Let us wait for Ed Sheeran. Come on, Ed. (laughs) Very long, these Ed Sheeran tracks, aren't they? It really is. Here's Becky Marshall Potter who runs Folk East welcoming us. Hello, Becky. Are we nearly there? You've got two more meters. Can I go over here? Hey. Boss Morris, ladies and gentlemen, please give Boss Morris a round of applause. They've done a wonderful job. Thank you so much. I'm going to walk over the finishing line. Let's do it. Here we are, coming into Folk East. So that was the story of the Folk on Foot Big Walk 2023 from Wickham in Hampshire to Folk East in Suffolk. And we have already raised an enormous amount for the charity Help Musicians, but we could raise more with your help. So if you would like to make a donation to the Big Walk, please go to folkonfoot.com slash bigwalk and every penny there goes directly to Help Musicians to support the musicians we all love. And if you want to support Folk on Foot itself, we rely entirely on our listeners to keep us going. You can go to folkonfoot.com slash support us and either become a patron of the podcast, for which you'll get great rewards, or just simply buy us a coffee. And every donation there keeps us going, goes back into making more episodes of Folk on Foot, like the ones that we've done so far. So either make a donation to help musicians or support Folk on Foot and keep buying the CDs, the merch, the tickets to see musicians. Above all, that is their vital lifeline. <laughs>